<laughs> All right, so um, how many of the publishers here use Jets? There's a lot of you, mostly on this side of the room. <laughs> how many of you have heard of Jets? Okay, great. So um, next up, we have um, Graham Knott. He, he works with eLife, and they are creating a tool to convert um, JATS metadata to Crossref metadata. Uh, um, as some of you might be aware, there, we, ha we support that to some degree. We have an XSLT uh, transformation that you can use to transform your JATS into Crossref metadata. Um, it's, it's not entirely up to date, and it's really um, for article by article updates. So we're always excited to hear about people who are doing a better job than we are at something, because maybe we can just use their work instead of doing it ourselves. Or it might be something that complements what we're doing. So I'm really excited to hear more about Graham's tool. Thank you. Hello, thanks Patricia. Um, my name is Graham Knott. Uh, I've been a contract developer at eLife for a number of years. And uh, today I'll describe what we have for a Crossref deposit solution. Um, I don't know, um, you said it's better, but I'm gonna say it's different. And I hope to explain how it is different. Um, so this is what we have right now for uh, technology. It's using Python as the programming language. It's compatible in version two and three now. Um, and instead of XSLT, we're using a library called Beautiful Soup, uh, which is sometimes used as a web scraper, but uh, here we're using it as X XML parser because uh, the tagging is much similar anyway. The Crossref generation library is, um, has a very long name, but that's the actual Crossref library that we're using. It also borrows some things from another uh, library called eLife Article, which I'll explain in a little bit. And also we have a JATS parser. This is what uses the beautiful soup and it basically is extracting out metadata from the JATS so we can use it later on. And the software we have is all open source licensed. Most of it's MIT licensed. It's available for free for anyone to download. And, um, and you can also collaborate with us if you want to open an issue on GitHub and we can discuss anything that doesn't work with your particular style of JATS. This is what we did in the past. In 2014, approximately, is when we first took on depositing Crossref deposits at eLife. Prior to that, it was done by our typesetter. And that included the basic metadata, the DOI, the title, contributors, I think it was all the contributors, and the publication date. It was a side project because we had a, an existing code set and this sort of was a bit of a sidecar, you could say, that it was borrowing things that we'd already had and it was, it was something we just needed right away for um, POA deposits, which is our publish on accept uh, deposits. In around 2015, we added more metadata because we we're going to support the version of record as well. So we added abstracts, funding, access indicators, citations, and components because we're using component DOIs for a number of the figures and some supplementary data. It was still attached to that sort of other library, that other code that was sitting off to the side there. And in 2017, we thought we should make it its own entity make it useful for others. Uh, we added more metadata. While we were at it, we just sort of made a list of other things that we could add. We uh, report the text and data mining links so that Crossref can tell you where to find the full text XML or the PDF of each of the eLife articles. And we also reported 
the data sets using a related item tag. Uh, the code libraries, as you saw on a previous slide, were broken apart so that we could um, compose them in different ways. The article uh, objects can be used in a few other of our projects. And the parser had already exists that would extract things from JATs so that we could use them later. We also got some samples from Patricia and from uh, some other sources that were non-eLife XML. We know that JATs can be in, you know, expressed in many different ways and there's different tagging and, and so I tested a few of those and I did make some changes to the code to make them a little more adaptive to other people's JATS files. It's not guaranteed to work with everyone's. Uh, it may omit a few things if you tried it as it's written. Um, that's a chance for it to be uh, further enhanced. And really one of the goals in 2017 was to contribute back. We wanted to make sure that people could actually use this, that it wasn't a big hurdle to try and understand how they could integrate it into their existing workflow, or perhaps if they didn't have a lot of technical knowledge, how they could get it, get it going for themselves. Here's how it works for eLife. We have all of the, uh, all of the article data in JATS XML, and that starts as the input in step one there. Then it's converted to, in the center, you'll see Python objects. And this was just an easy way to populate them with all the metadata that we want. And then there's a common way of reaching step two, which is the Crossref XML output. In the center, you can see the article has some standard metadata. As you'd find, it has all the publisher and ISSN. I didn't uh, put that in here. It looks like some of them are even coming out of their boxes, <laughs> the names. So, um, so you can have, uh, of course, multiple contributors. Each contributor can have multiple affiliations. Uh, uh, you can have multiple article dates as well, licenses, data sets, funding awards, citations, and the components. Um, also, I wanted to, because uh, people have mentioned, of course, that you could have some incomplete or um, not so great data. It does, of course, depend on how good your JATS input is. We're not going out and looking for ORCIDs. We're not um, looking up DOIs for references. It's all coming from this source and it's not going to external services to try and populate any of these. Of course, you could do that. You can um, compose it in a different way. And the Crossref XML on the outside um, is it just including all the metadata that is possible to include. Um, and it's one of the more recent schemas. I think it's maybe 4.4.2 or 4.4.3. As part of making this uh, usable for other journals, I moved out a lot of the configuration. Of course, uh, the word eLife for a journal not everyone uses that. Of course, you're a different registrant at uh, Crossref and depositor name. So those can all be put in this .cfg file if you're running it yourself and it will just insert those in place of wherever eLife is for us. Uh, there's 20, approximately, there's more than 20 options, but those were really to make sure that we could, for eLife articles, report everything we wanted to, but also not lock in other people to using our format. You could also turn things off. Um, that are configurable. Uh, one example is the DUI pattern. We don't have the URL of an article in the JATS file. So this allows us to take that manuscript number, which for us is a five digit number, and create the URL for each DOI. And that's in the configuration file. That's something you could do per journal. Also the pub date types. Uh, looking through some examples, there, people use different values for their publication date, uh, and these go in order. It will look for, in this case, we're saying look for one called pub. Next, if you don't find one, look for publication, then look for EPUB. I think we use the first two, and then the, uh, the other, the three and four, sometimes we see in other people's stats that I tested. When you looked at the diagram in the center, the objects, they don't have to necessarily be 
populated by JATs. You could have an API, you could have a database, and you could just create these and just set values for them uh, if that would make more sense for your workflow or for your vendor. You could also populate the ones in the center partially and then you could set some or you could remove some data um, from maybe a different source. And because it is open source, you could also modify the code that we have. You could contribute those modifications back if we want to accept it in the main project. Or you could also just have your own copy of this and you could pull in updates that we've made or just do your own thing. Some other possible integrations. Um, one thing I've, I've tried and I have a demonstration of a web form uh, maybe similar to the Crossref one where you just attach a file from your computer and you'll at least see what, what can this library produce for you without having to install anything. And it was a way to lower the barriers, see, um, of course it's going to pick up your abstract. I sure hope it will pick up your abstract. Um, so if you see it there and you want to send abstracts, this might be a tool you want to use. You can see the output. Um, and compare it to what you're sending now. Um, another idea is to integrate it, uh, you could have it as almost a service or an API on uh, a whole different system and you just send out data and it will send back the output to you. And you don't have, in case you're not running Python, you have a different uh, platform, you could just have it as a service in another area. Um, and here's some links. There's just the eLife Sciences website. Uh, you'll find the code on GitHub. This is where we do all our development and collaboration. And I also have a link to the web form demo. Uh, I can probably, if you have any JATS XML, as well as questions about JATS XML, it looks like a lot of people are using it, but also some people don't know much about it. I'll spend some time in the labs area and you can find me and I'll um, provide any information I can and see if it would work with the tool and see what we can do. Okay, thank you. No, no, it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.